Welcome back to Longhorn Tactical. I'm Josh and today we're diving into the cutting edge world of LEP technology with three powerhouses, the Nightcore P35i, the Phoenix HT30R, and the Olight Valkyrie Turbo. If you've ever wished for a beam that cuts through darkness like a lightsaber, then you're in for a treat because we're talking about laser excited phosphor technology, which is on the bleeding edge of flashlight technology as a whole. Imagine a beam so intense it reaches farther than a traditional LED spotlight. We're talking a mile of range with all the fidelity of a traditional light. Stick around as we explore the unique features of these flashlights and witness firsthand this incredible performance set to redefine your flashlight expectations. So what is LEP or just in general, what is an LEP flashlight? So like I mentioned at the top of the video, LEP stands for laser excited phosphor. And the reaction happening in the light is a blue laser hitting a phosphor, and then it reflects the laser into broad spectrum light. With the beam being very concentrated, and often there's a convex lens that helps either further narrow the beam or widen the light. Now there are two ways that these lights can harness this reaction. Either a mirror type LEP module where a laser is bounced off a phosphor element, or what these three lights have, a shine through LEP module, which is going to be more compact and energy efficient, where the laser punches through the phosphor directly in order to emit a broad spectrum light. So then, should you be cautious and is the LEP a little bit dangerous? I would say yes, but not because of the laser. I know that it says class one laser right there on the tin, but that's because it's using the laser for the phosphor. No laser actually gets out because the phosphor outputs broad spectrum light. For these lights, it's the candela or just the intensity for layman speak of how focused this light is. The P35i is going to have an intensity of 678,000 candela. And then our Olight gun mounted light is going to have an intensity of 70,225 candela. And then our Phoenix light, the HT30R is going to have an intensity of 600,000 candela. And so, yeah, well, it's not a laser light, which is going to be doing you know, damage as well. It's just this broad spectrum light that's going to be super focused, that's going to be hurting your eye. And so yeah, summary, don't shine it in your eye. So what are you even going to be needing an LEP for? What's the application? Well, these are basically going to just be acting like searchlights on steroids. Not only are they going to be going further than your traditional LED, they're gonna be more efficient because bear in mind, the only thing that's sucking up any power is going to be the UI, any power indication in a laser. And traditionally, lasers are pretty dang effective at using energy while not, you know, expelling it at its heat, unlike LEDs. And so if we're hunting, if you're doing search and rescue, um, if you're surveying any piece of land, that's really where LEPs are gonna shine. And I know that the French Coast Guard even uses the P35i almost exclusively from Nightcore um, for all of their operations as well. LEP technology is also going to be coming with its own unique downsides as well. And its biggest strength is also its biggest weakness. It's going to be very concentrated, meaning that there's not going to be a lot of spill. And so odds are, if you're using LEP, you're not going to be seeing a lot of what's around you. Also with LEPs, the LEP module is going to be a fair bit bigger than its LED counterparts, meaning that size and how compact these lights can be is often a problem with the technology we have now. As well as that, all of these are going to be classified with a class one laser, and that's not because they're outputting laser, but there's a laser involved with the producing of the light, meaning that there can be some restrictions around where you can bring these because it is going to have a laser involved with the light making process. Also, just because of how new all this technology is, I think the first like consumer grade LEP came out in 2018. There's not going to be a lot of innovation, not a lot of variety in LEP lights yet. And as well as that, because it's so new, it's all going to be pretty dang pricey, at least from my standpoint. Oh, and of course, like I mentioned before, you can easily blind somebody with these. These are not toys. And now I've kind of been teasing them all video long. Here are going to be our LEP lights. And these are just kind of going to be state of the industry lights. You have your basic generic LEP light. You have your LEP LED combo light right here. And then you have your LEP gun light, which I'm going to start with here. As you can see, this is going to be the O light. Valkyrie Turbo, what a cool gun light this is. Looking at the beam shot, you can see how this has a very concentrated beam shape. Again, it's an LEP light, and that can seem dissuading, but at very close range, as this is going to be a handgun mounted light, 
it's going to be bouncing off walls or whatever you point it out because of how much candela is coming out of this. And so there is going to be a kind of faux fill for whenever you are using this light. Chris made that point in his video, the original video on this light, and you can go check out the original videos for these lights as well. But he knows a lot more about these mounted lights than I do. But he also pointed out something else that I wanted to, you know, highlight here as well, that the average uh, uh, length of engagement, how far you are away from somebody, um, is going to be around seven yards in these situations. And so this is going to basically be lighting up the entire torso of the person that you are pointing this light at, which is going to be really nice for helping your aim. As for me personally, I can see how people would like this as a mounted LEP, as it's going to be the middle ground between a laser and a mounted light because it's going to have that concentration and that distance of a laser while still having that illumination and fidelity of a traditional light. And because it's using a laser and not an LED or not both combined, it's going to be much more efficient in its runtime. Usually whenever you see a light and laser combination, that's only going to be lasting like 45 minutes. And honestly, if that's all the runtime you need out of it, that's good. But this is going to be going upwards for like two hours, 30 minutes. And that's going to be something that's going to be awesome for this small of a light. Also, the strobe on this is super easy to get to, and it's just going to be not amazing to look at. And now moving on to the Phoenix HT30R, this is going to be kind of your basic high quality LEP flashlight. It's going to have a relatively compact build. I mean, I think this light only comes in at around seven inches long, which is going to be very nice. And it's not going to have like a massive bell shaped head and it's going to have a great UI. This is probably going to be my favorite UI as it's a two button tail switch. As you can see here, power, change the brightness of the LEP, and then you can strobe it as well. This light is also going to be USB-C rechargeable, which you can access by unscrewing the bezel, and it'll stop right there to unveil the USB-C. And because it's going to be hidden underneath this whole bezel here, it's going to be IP68 waterproof, meaning that it's going to be very durable on top of it already being very compact. And on top of all that, this is going to have great run times because LEPs are going to be pretty dang efficient. And so if you're looking to get your feet wet with LEP technology, I would check this light out. It's pretty dang cool. And last up here in this lineup, we're talking about this big dog right here. This is going to be the Nightcore P35i. This is going to be yet another high quality LEP flashlight, which is going to be very durable. It's IP68 waterproof and it's going to be EDC-ish. I say ish because it's going to be very large. However, it's going to have a very nice grip and UI. It's going to be USB-C rechargeable through this boot here. You can see that USB-C port and it's going to have a tail switch, side switch combo. So that way, whenever you're flipping through your modes, it's pretty easy to just hit that side switch there. And as you can see, it's going to be solving the LEP problem that I keep talking about. The fact that it's usually too concentrated, it employs six Cree LEDs that allows it to have a much more nice spill. And while those LEDs do end up eating away a lot at that 21700 that this light runs off of, one thing that I love about this light is going to be that OLED screen, which displays the runtime, the mode, and the level that this light is in. And it's only flickering because of the camera right now. It doesn't flicker in real life, but this is just going to be awesome as it keeps you updated on everything that this light is doing. It's not covered by your hand whenever you're switching the modes, and it's going to be a real-time display as well. It changes uh, with the runtime, it changes with your mode switching, it's going to be awesome. And so if you're looking to upgrade your LEP game, I would look at this as it solves all the major issues with LEPs. And the only thing I can really complain about is really the runtime and the battery is removable. And so even then you can just pack some spares and this thing will last you all night. And I guarantee you it goes over a mile. There's not a place that you cannot search with the P35i coming from Nightcore. Well guys, that's about all I have to say on LEP technology. I think that it's super cool and I can't wait to see more innovations. Thank you so much for watching till the end, liking and subscribing, and we will see you in the next one.